I'm sure, like me, many of you have been watching all the news going on with the, the death of uh, Queen Elizabeth and, and all the coverage of the last week and, and uh, the funeral which has taken place on Monday the 19th. And I, I must say, I've been watching it the whole day. I've been, I've been closely watching it. And you know, there's nobody that does pageantry and these sort of ceremonies like the UK. I'm sorry, any other country. I'm sorry to insult you, but I think London and Britain just does pageantry like nobody else in the world. And you know, the, the magnificence of seeing London and all the colours and Windsor Castle and the marching. I mean, they didn't put a foot wrong all day. They just, everything was planned and with, with meticulous time and everything just fell into place. It, it was just magnificent. It was a marvel to watch. Uh, but there's now a time to come back to reality uh, because the news hasn't been covering much else other than what's going on with the, with the Queen and, and the preparations for the funeral this week. So I wanted to bring us back to reality with a bit of a jolt uh, because the UK is facing the biggest crisis it's facing, faced in, in over 30 years. And many younger people will not know a crisis like this because yes, we had the so-called Great Recession of 2008, but then governments reduced interest rates and, and brought interest rates down to zero, giving us a decade of cheap borrowing and you know a chance to, to re-stimulate the things the economy but it didn't allow a proper recession to happen in, in my opinion but now interest rates are going up around the world and UK interest rates are set to rise this week by anywhere between a half to one percent most experts are saying 0.75 percent the biggest margin rise in 33 years by the way they normally go up by quarters um, and, and the, because the pound has been sliding against the dollar it's at a 37 year low and the US Federal Reserve have been more aggressively raising interest rates to curb uh, record runaway inflation. Um, and, and that's what the governments are all uh, worried about. And because the dollar is the reserve currency of the world, everything we buy like oil and gas is all paid for in dollars. And that means the dollar has become a, a, a hugely strong currency, despite people saying, oh, the dollar is going to collapse and everyone's going to put their money into gold and Bitcoin. Hasn't happened. Bitcoin's down. Gold isn't, hasn't really risen. Bitcoins, I think the last I looked was barely over 20,000 from a, a high of what, 70,000. People saying it's going to go to 100,000 and a million and beyond, you know, these Bitcoin people. But it hasn't really happened, has it? So the dollar is really strong. And this means that we're now repaying something like 15 to 20% more for imports. That's, you know, other than the fact that they've gone up because of the war and all the other things that's going on, Brexit, you know, the, the, the last two years of the, the events of that. Um, that's in addition to all of that, uh, we're just paying more for everything. We can see it in the shops, right? We can see how much we're paying extra. Even car parts, you know, I was told by my mechanic the other day, some of the car parts have gone up by 35%. Um, it, it's just it's just crazy. So what's going to happen this week? We're going to see more misery for mortgage holders and, and borrowers as the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee meets on Thursday. That's ahead of Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget, the Chancellor, the second most powerful man in the country. He has a mini budget on Friday and they're expected to hike interest rates. At the moment, the Bank of England is independent of the government supposedly, so they make their own decisions. They have a committee that decide on interest rates and many of the, the newspapers have been lobbying them and they think that there's definitely going to be another interest rate rise. So if you're thinking about getting a fixed rate mortgage, now might be the time to secure that. If, if it may be too late, but try and get onto your brokers to at least secure a deal, even if you're not going to take up the money right now. So that's what's going to happen this week. And rates, if they rise by 0.75, will add a typical mortgage, an average mortgage of 138,000, will add over 700 pounds a year addition to that to that mortgage. Uh, that's assuming they've got a repayment variable rate mortgage. But many people are on fixed rates. So I, don't, I don't care, I'm on a fixed rate. But eventually that fixed rate will come to an end. Most fixed rates in this country are between two and five years. When that comes to an end, you could be in for a nasty shock like doubling your mortgage. It's happened to me on a buy to let mortgage. My mortgage doubled um, straight away. And even when I put it onto another fixed rate deal, uh, it, it's still more than double. In short, the days of cheap borrowing seem to be over for at least, I would say, the next 10 years. You can never say never, but it certainly looks like it's over at the moment. And, you know, as I said, the Federal Reserve are regressively pushing things up. So that's causing Europe and other countries uh, to push rates up. And, the, and some of the, the, the commentators around the world have been saying that this is going to drive the world into a recession. And also mortgage lenders are uh, 
factoring this in when you come to apply for a mortgage they're going to say well instead of lending you what maybe a year ago we would have given you say two hundred thousand pounds now with higher interest rates and higher costs obviously they're going to probably scale that back to a, a lower figure and uh, higher interest rates mean that um, for, for buy to let borrowers they're going to have to look at these deals now and say well is it worth it am I getting the same net yield after all my costs is is I'm going to am I going to get the same net yield a lot of buyers say well if I'm buying this property for a hundred thousand it's giving me five thousand year rent that's a yield of five five thousand five five thousand pounds but it's a yield of five percent but when you take in the net yield when you take off your cost like your mortgage borrowing if you if you're taking out a mortgage then you've got to look at these deals in more detail and and for some it's going to put I remember when buying buy to let properties didn't give you much of an income you just about broke even on on a deal because you were paying nine ten eleven percent on the mortgages but you were looking for capital growth which which was higher in those days I have to say but uh, we're going to have to look at that now and examine things carefully now business borrowers are also going to face huge additional costs imagine you know if you've got overdrafts you've got bank loans which are on variable rates you, you know you, that's going to be making you suffer an insolvency are already up in England and Wales as many businesses go to the wall with increased fuel costs electricity gas uh, petrol you name it yeah and ultimately it's local uh, low paid workers and small businesses that generally suffer uh, when, when these things hit and they get hit hardest in in a recession people with capital behind them people with cash behind them can, can normally ride things out and as long as you've got income coming in you, you should be okay but over the last 10 years consumers in here in America and many other countries have sort of feasted on this enormous amount of credit that's been available uh, borrowing against their homes buying cars you know with huge car payments I mean some I heard the other day that in America it's not uncommon to have car payments of six seven hundred dollars a month uh, which is a lot and here people think nothing of taking a car loan of two or three hundred pounds a month uh, and you know the, these these things are going to come home to roost for them because you know it's always been a bad idea to to borrow money at high interest rates to purchase uh, consumer goods right it's always been a bad idea especially when those consumer goods generally go down in value uh, most cars for instance you know not not classic cars but you know this is what people do and it's all very well as long as the income keeps coming in but when that stops I think we're going to see more debt collectors and bailiffs doing very very well from from this system because you're going to see more repossessions of cars you're going to see neighbors with their cars towed away and houses going into repossession as things come home to roost and in my smart money manager courses um, I always stress that borrowing uh, to, to, to buy things on you know high interest rate credit to, uh, on, on stuff that is worth as almost a second you take it out of the shop is really a terrible idea so now's the time to prepare for the economic winter ahead in the UK it's getting cold already and I think that's going to happen as we go into further interest rate rises and more things happening more jobs uh, going to the wall and I think we're in for a tough time that's that's only my opinion you might not agree with me do, do say so in the comments and incidentally please like and subscribe to my, my channel and do wait to the end because I always have a special offer for you at the end now uh, I'd say get your house in order fasten your seat belts and get ready for a rough ride definitely because you know when times are good and borrowing is cheap everyone's having a good time aren't they lots of new cars on the road um, lots of extensions going up and roof extension roof loss everyone's doing stuff to their houses and builders are, are rushed off their feet but when the cycle ends and the cycles like a cycle you know it, that's what it means it goes round and round and it, it ends and you know I think Winston Churchill said the further we can look back the more we can learn about the present and the future and when I look back and I've seen these cycles before many many times and I've seen a lot of people get caught with their pants down and I don't want to be one of them so look in short the party's over I think and inflation is running out of control which means that central banks are now pulling back on uh, the economy and that means the economy is going to go into recession all over the world we're going to see a slowdown in in growth jobs uh, company profits and the stock market will, will suffer according to, accordingly I don't think property prices will crash like a stock market would crash but I, I'm expecting to see quite a big correction in the stock market maybe this month in, in September or October uh, so now's the time to learn how to manage your money properly now's the time to really prepare for the downturn ahead let me ask you a question do you have any savings and, and how long could you last for how long could you last if the 
uh, income stopped coming in? How many months could you pay your bills? Most people can't pay their bills beyond a month or so. And, and do you know how to invest your money to get a real return rather than just leaving money in the bank? And are you just fed up struggling? You know, and if you answered these questions uh, in the way I think most people would answer them, then I think you need to look at what I can offer you. I can help you transform your finances and help you become financially free over time. Not a get rich quick scheme. This is not some crypto wonder scheme. This is building your finances properly, building your house on foundations rather than on sand. So what can you do to transform your finances to become financially free? So to help you get under control, get these things under control, I'm offering you, I've got a very limited number of slots opened up for my free Wealth Accelerator Discovery Call, where I, you know, you click on the link, you can get on a call with me, book a call with me on Zoom, and we can look at your finances in a bit more detail and decide where you can go and whether I can do anything to help you get there. So thanks for listening. Have a, have a great week ahead. I've put, put my podcast out earlier this week because of the, the pending things that are gonna be happening this week. With, with interest rates and the mini budget, but I'll be, I'll be with you again by the weekend. So thanks for listening and bye for now. Do, do not uh, forget to, to like and share and, and sub, uh, subscribe as well, that it helps to get the content out, the, the free content that I put out. In the meantime, check that link for the free Wealth Discovery Call. Bye for now.